Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, it appears that the US is not finished in its project of deindustrializing Europe, according to the latest reports. Now, the US government is encouraging the European Union to sanction and prohibit the import of Russian palladium and titanium. Now, the EU has not yet undertaken a decision in this regard, given the strategic importance of these metals. Now, let's look at it. Titanium is a key metal for the aviation and nuclear industries, plus other things, while palladium is used in the production of chips and automobile catalysts. Now, the question remains whether politics will prevail over economics in this instance, given that the EU has always caved into US demands on sanctions, even when they've seriously destroyed and caused serious harm to the industries of the European countries. Now, a source, according to the Washington Post, who requested anonymity, revealed that the Biden administration had said the issue during a meeting of the Group of Seven uh, finance ministers in Washington. Now, last week, the financial officials from around the world gathered in the US uh, for meetings of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. Now, the US has already forced Europe to end its reliance on Russian gas, causing it serious problems in a number of countries of the region. Plus, it's obviously caused fucking immense problems. This have now been forced to buy LNG at much higher prices, which has led to a major deindustrialization and higher prices for consumers across all the countries, but particularly Germany. Now, now it's come to industrial metals. Now, Europe's always been seriously dependent on imported metals, many of them from Russia, and has previously demonstrated a reluctance to import sanctions on them. Now, in order to impose some sanctions, the European countries of the Big Seven, or G7, Germany, France and Italy, will need the support of the other 24 members of the European Union, which they might get, simply because most of those are not there. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinside.com, to further develop it. And you do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who does donate does get a personal thank you from me. And I'm telling you now, thanks for watching. Love to see you. Love you watching me. Now, for those of you who are specialists in metals, palladium is a soft, silvery white metal used primarily in the manufacture of catalytic converters for fossil fuel vehicles, the electronics industry, dentistry, medicine, hydrogen purification, the chemical industry, particularly for groundwater purification, but also jewellery. Now, its unique physical and chemical properties of palladium make it the metal of the future and one of the key elements for the hydrogen economy. Unlike other platinum group metals, palladium has the unique property of being permeable to only one element, hydrogen. Now, because of this property, palladium membranes can also be used to produce ultra-pure hydrogen. Now, another promising area is the storage and transport of hydrogen. Palladium can also be used to make hydrogen recombiners, which capture hydrogen from the air and combine it with oxygen converting the flammable hydrogen into a safe water vapour. Now, in the future, palladium may be used in electrolyzers and fuel cells. I mean, the largest producers of palladium are Russia and South Africa. They have between 70 and 80 percent of the world's total production, followed by the USA, Canada and Zimbabwe. Now, palladium's futures are traded on the London Platinum and Palladium Exchange, as well as the New York Mercantile Exchange. Now, according to Nikolai Perlavsky, who's the head of economic research at CN, the distinctive and physical chemical attributes of palladium put in a position as a pivotal component of the hydrogen economy. Palladium is also distinct from its other uh, things. Now, Western countries have been seeking to impose more sanctions on Russia that would impact its metals trade. Now, but they don't actually take into account the effect it will have on them and their dependence on them. I mean, the price of palladium has increased by 12% uh, in, in November. Driven by speculation, the metal could be subject to restrictions following the sanctions of certain Russian metals by 
set the US Metals Exchange on UK Metals Exchange. Now, Norilsk Nickel accounts for 40% of global palladium production. Additionally, Russia is the farthest largest producer of titanium. Let's go over 6%. Now, Russia's VSPO Avisma, which I've covered in many other uh, videos, it produces a quarter of the global market for products manufactured from that. Their parts are essential for the global aviation and defence sector. And Russia also supplies titanium to Boeing, Airbus, Embraer in Brazil, as well as uh, other countries that are dependent on it. Now, the US dropped its purchases uh, in the last few months, and but imports to, uh, to Europe can be strong. But the US figure is low because it buys from a third countries like Turkey to get around the sanctions. Now, the sanctions will have a significant impact on the high-tech industries of France, Germany and the UK, particularly those involved in aerospace manufacturing, space technology and the automobiles. And it's very unlikely that London is going to be able to replace titanium by expanding the development of deposits in Canada, Australia, as well France and Germany have problems sourcing from alternative suppliers, even at higher costs. Now, in the case of palladium, the US source is primarily Russian. Their bans will result in a significant shortage of the materials for catalytic converters for what's left of the automobile industry in the, in the <coughs> in Europe, which is about the only bit left because the electronics, uh, electric vehicles, is pretty much gone. Now, it's no longer sufficient for Europe to rely on Russian suppliers if they put this sanctions so they're going to have to look to south africa zimbabwe and canada but those capabilities are constrained and it's unlikely that they're going to be able to put up for the lost import volumes that um that are lost from russia i mean china for example is a global leader in titanium production it has an output of 110,000 tons per year and that's 46 percent of the world's total but the majority of their production is consumed by its domestic market. Japan, which has 17%, is also unable to increase supplies to Europe. It's already there. Which is why the price has gone up with 25%. And palladium is now at 1,250 uh, per troy ounce for the first time this year. I mean, any analysts have said that sanctions will result in a further price increase by about 50%, and that's seriously going to impact the industry. Production lines will be halted, delayed to aircraft production, and things. companies like Boeing and Airbus do not need that. Their problems will be extended by another 6 to 12 months. Now, palladium can theoretically be replaced by platinum, but that's caused serious technological difficulties and further increased in cost. I mean, expanding the processing and recycling of metals also takes up a whole lot of time and investment, and the Western economies are already facing too many challenges due to the impact of uh, sanctions, whether in deindustrialization is emerging. So the energy industrial um, complex of uh, the Europe has gone by 20%. And the large countries like Germany, France and Italy and the UK have gone into serious recession. I mean, according to um, Eurostat, between July uh, 2023 and 2024, Europe's decreased by 2.2%. And any further difficulties is going to only benefit Russia. Because Russia will not be left without a sales market. I mean, at the BRICS summit, Russia is in negotiation with other BRICS members about establishing an international metals exchange. I mean, this initiative was outlined by the Russian finance minister, Anton Sulyanov, and is designed to ensure fair pricing and facilitate growth and get away from the speculators who currently dominate the London Metals Exchange, London Bullion Market Exchange, and the Chicago Metals Exchange. Now, this will create price indicators for metals, standards for the production and trade of metals, as well as tools for the accreditation of market participants. And that will be clear within the BRICS framework. BRICS Prince Metal Exchange will provide a competitive alternative to the Western trading platforms like the LME and offer protection from uh, Western sanctions to BRICS members like Russia, Iran, China, 
uh, etc. Plus Norilsk Nickel, who's one of the largest suppliers of metals in the world, particularly nickel. It, it has palladium and um, nickel and, uh, in its bones. So the majority of its sales are to China anyway, uh, plus other India, etc. So they don't really care. I mean, Norilsk Nickel published its statistics for the third quarter and its statement. It said it had produced 676,000 tonnes of palladium over the period. And that's an increase on the last couple of years. So Russia's never going to have a problem. And Europe is going to have a problem. And if it follows up uh, being uh, the lapdog and the yapping chihuahua uh, of uh, the it will just continue to commit economic suicide to please the USA. Now, thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe. Please share uh, as much as you can. I could like to grow my audience. Please help me out by pressing the thanks button at the bottom of the screen and making a small donation. And don't forget to comment. I'd love to see you. Love to see you all again. See you soon.